Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going through the Trial of Leviathan EX2. It is about time. Um, I hadn't really attempted this ever since I beat EX1. I tried it a couple times and just got wiped really hard. But very similar to the Shiva EX2 guide that I did, where Tifa's new weapon really was the difference maker, for this fight, Kimura Wand on Aerith is the difference maker. So let's go ahead and get right into the setup and I will show you kind of what we're doing. So the bread and butter here, Kimura Wand, it does two things that are very important. Uh, probably most importantly, the magic defense increase. Um, at OB6, it's potency high right out the gate, but it's medium even if you don't have it at OB6. So I do think it's still good even if you're at OB5, OB1, somewhere in there. Everything that this has is really good for this fight. Boost HP, really important. Buff debuff extension is very nice. Uh, the magic defense is like, you have to have that. And the physical attack increase is also quite nice because we are using Cloud with Mirasame. And in the beginning, when you have to like deplete that bar at a certain amount of time, this really does help. The other thing that helps here is this middle heal boost because you will need to be able to do single target cures. And so giving the extra plus 20% is very nice with that. All right. Um, next thing to know when you're setting up this team, whoever you want to be tanking Leviathan, Leviathan single target shots needs to have the lowest HP on the team. Uh, he will almost always attack the lowest HP target. So we've set this up to where Aerith is the one who's going to tank that because she has the highest magic defense and have also put some water resist on, which I'll show in a second. Uh, Cloud barely has more HP than her. Um, so with that out of the way, we do have our single target cure, our AOE cure down here. The reason I didn't go for a cure materia in this slot, which is a cure all, is just because I don't have a five star cure, and the extra healing that I get from Fairy Tail to me is worth the extra difference. For limit breaks, you want to use as many uh, lower charge speed limits as possible. This is really nice. 69% uh, heal is pretty good. And the charge speed just makes it to we, where we can interrupt him more frequently. Because if you don't remember from EX1, this fight is made so much easier by being able to constantly do one limit break at a time in order to interrupt him so that he continues looping a skill, thus buying you more time. Okay, so we really paid attention to HP, heal and magic defense for sub weapons this is pretty obvious it's magic defense and heal magic defense and heal and then i brought the rifle of levin here because water resist and since i'm gonna have Aerith being the tank i felt like some water resist on her would go a long way coming over to red seaside collar is very important if you're going to be using red because thunder resist is a big deal or the decrease of thunder resist aka thunder breach um, the reason that's a big deal, he constantly buffs his thunder, uh, defense and you have to be able to do the thunder damage to really clear that bar down. So this is really nice. Um, again, magic attack decrease also important because he will constantly buff his magic attack and you, you just need to be able to take that down because he'll give himself like an ultra high potency magic attack. Um, I think you probably could use the third limit that he has to deal with that as well. Um, I haven't really looked into that though. And Sled Fang, honestly, it works really well anyway. Uh, low charge speed, very nice. And the duration's also pretty good. And we'll be, we'll be using that to just interrupt him, keep the magic attack down, and everybody can survive. Um, other than that, I've got a lightning damage source. X Sigil Break is a big deal. You need X and Triangle. And that was one other thing I did not cover on uh, Aerith. The only real sigil break that I'm worried about, I brought X. Um, I could have brought another one to help Cloud. I just didn't really feel like it was important. Okay, sub equipment here. Uh, this is just for HP, to be honest with you. This is also just for HP. And then this here is HP and buff debuff extension, which is very nice because he's the one who's enabling us to do a lot of DPS. Now, coming over to Cloud, I just got Mirasame to OB10, like within the last five or six days, and it's going to help. I think you could do it with an OB6 one, but OB10 definitely makes it pretty nice. Um, 
mostly focused here on having a little bit of magic defense, but physical attack and some HP, those were the primary things. Now, you could, instead of Judgment Bolt here, you could use uh, Klim Hazard. It's a 900 charge speed, and he's constantly going to be debuffed the way we've run this. So this can also work and just buy you more and more time. If you're having trouble doing it uh, with, you know, Judgment Bolt, I would suggest maybe trying that out. Okay, uh, all stat sticks, you know, with the exception of Ruin right here, and uh, obviously because we'd need the double triangle. And if for some reason he ever would finish it early, we do have X in the form of Braver, so we've got all the sigils pretty much covered here. Sub equipment, uh, I already have like pretty high lightning on him, and there's not a lot of, I don't personally have a lot of good lightning weapons that also give attack. They're not start up very high. So I went with uh, guide gloves here, mostly just to add a little bit of physical attack, but the physical ability potency is what I'm most concerned about. Same thing with enemy launcher. And as you can see here, uh, that was able to get us to level five. Uh, so 60% extra damage on physical. That's a pretty big deal. Lightning potency, we're sitting at level seven, and that is purely based on uh, crystal gloves here, which is HP lightning potency and Mirasame. That is the entirety of the team setup. And one last time, I'm going to remind you, I would say maybe the two most important things you can know for this fight in the very beginning, which I will talk about, you need to be able to break his bar before his countdown's off. Otherwise, it's game over. And secondly, save your limit breaks. Don't combo them. Just kind of use them one after the other after the other to interrupt him. Anytime you see the message above his head, getting him to loop like that will buy you a lot of time and make it to where you can get the DPS to bring him down. All right, we'll go ahead and get into the fight now. Okay, order of operations in the beginning is going to be red, then Aerith, then Cloud. The first thing we're going to do is Lightning Breach so that we can get some damage. That's very important. Come over to Aerith, Spiritual Harmony, so we give ourselves the uh, attack buff. And as soon as I see that applied, I'm going to hit with Cloud, waiting for it just so I get the most amount of damage in. Back to red, we're going to do Frenzied Fang. Give him one debuff on his magic attack, just so that the damage is kind of kept in check. And then from there... It's going to just be um, mostly Power Fangs trying to break that lightning defense so that we can do the maximum amount of damage. Switch your stance when he does his first level AoE there. Heal afterwards. It's not that big of a deal. He will buff his magic attack every time with that, uh, but I'm just not too worried about it. You saw me throw one lightning move with red. If you're having a little bit of trouble breaking the bar fast enough, Feel free to use some other characters just to jump in. You shouldn't need a whole lot of extra damage, but every little bit can help. Here I use the Sled Fang just to take down that uh, magic attack again before the tidal wave. Then I'm going to jump back on. Actually, I'm going to do one more so that I actually get the actual debuff on him. Then we're going over to Aerith, and I'm just watching my buffs at this point because I really want that high uh, magic defense buff. So I kind of timed that there right when it expired no problem switch your stance he hits the tidal wave but honestly it's not going to do that much damage because of the debuffs and buffs that we have go ahead kiraga switch your stance back and he's going to go into a sigil break phase here and it should be no problem just start breaking sigils and then as your limits come up you're going to start seeing that tidal roar that he's doing like it it announces it with the banner above his like name you're just going to kind of wait and right now he's got full magic debuff so i'm gonna let the first couple hit us just because they're not really doing that much damage but now it's out so i'm going to cancel the next one with uh red and you can see here go ahead sled fang just cancel and ultimately that just makes makes it to where he's not doing a, a whole lot of damage to us while we're trying to break these sigils so you can literally just sit down there and jam triangle sigil break every time it comes up i go ahead and take this one as well because i'm gonna use breath of the earth uh, to cancel his next one but i wanted to at least get my money's worth for the heal there you go canceling it again and this is also kind of nice because 
while you're using these limit breaks, but you're jamming the sigils down, you're going to be refilling them pretty quickly. You can see here, red almost already has it back up. The only thing I'm not going to do is use Judgment Bolt here because it's not going to do enough damage. And since it's a longer charge time, I'm just going to hold that. So once I saw that the sigils are pretty much broken, I'm coming over to red and just basically preemptively loading that uh, Power Fang so that I can get the Lightning debuff up so that when he is broken, and you can see here I'm holding ATB with Cloud so that I could immediately start just jamming away on our, our damage there. I throw a frenzy, Frenzied Fang here just to keep that magic down, and because Red doesn't really have a whole lot else to do except for debuff, he can do some lightning damage, but ultimately it's just kind of sometimes better to make sure you've got the full debuffs up. I use Judgment Bolt first here because, one, we've got the max uh, lightning breach, and two, because it does take longer to recharge, I want to get that off early so that it can start recharging to use again later. There, I let that one go through instead of using Sled Fang, and the only reason for that is because when I see that he's already got his magic debuffed a lot of times, like this time I'm going to break it, but if I see that he's got like max potency down, I don't really want to stack that. Sled Fang actually has a pretty long time, I think it's like 30 seconds at OB6, and so I really like that to be the base if possible. We did the single target cure, coming back to Cloud. Now we were going to start trying to break this down. He's constantly buffing himself though, which is a little bit annoying. But we go back into a second sigil phase and it's the same as the last one, right? We are just going to focus on our sigils, knowing that we're going to start interrupting him as soon as you know I feel like we are in need. So here I'm starting with Aerith and the reason is I just wanted hers to recharge faster here, and the HP was kind of dropping a bit, so this will be pretty nice. I see the Sled Fang's up as well, so that's going to be the immediate next one because um, I'm getting something out of that debuff there. And as you can see, we're all, I mean, he's halfway done and we only have 10 left to break. This is where I come over to red and I start looking to be able to Power Fang. Really, really prioritizing, always trying to keep that attack buff up before I switch to Cloud. Obviously, the AI will cast for me too, but I really want to get the most out of every skill that Cloud uses. Guy Gyre Supreme comes up, and obviously we use Judgment Bolt to cancel it. It also breaks the bar. I don't know why, but I thought that said Geyser before, but it seems like... I'm reading it now, and it <laughs> actually says Geyer, which I don't even know what that is. Geyser would have made sense to me. Okay, we interrupt again with Sled Fang, and at this point, we are in the home stretch. It really doesn't matter. I do a couple Thundara blows just to kind of speed it up, but <laughs> then realize that his Lightning Breach was running out. Um, he's going to start doing some really strong single attacks. These Briny Bellows, and you can see there, it hits Aerith. I didn't switch stances because I'm just really trying to burst him down. Uh, if I would have, it would have honestly saved her probably about an extra 3,000 HP. And so because that was a little bit sloppy, Aerith dies. But I knew it wouldn't be a big deal. That's why I was just going all out. A lot of times with these EX2 boss fights, if you see that you've got them in your sights, it doesn't have to be the fanciest clear. Just start jamming the DPS when you've got them close so that they don't start charging a move that's going to wipe the party. Okay, well that's that. I hope this helped you clear Leviathan EX2. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.